Hello, people of YouTube. My name is Steve Gray, and thank you for watching. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, leave a like, and feel free to comment down below what you would like me to do in future videos. So today we are going to be talking about Mark Agnesi and Gibson yet again. And uh, some of you may be happy to know, and I was kind of happy when I found out, uh, that no, Mark Agnesi did not get fired from Gibson. Um, I think they were probably thinking about it a lot, um, I say that because of the backlash with the Be Authentic video, with him being in it, and the new face of Gibson's marketing, um, and then them obviously taking down all of the videos. Um, they are actually re-uploading videos as we speak. Um, if you Google, or sorry, if you go to YouTube and type in Gibson, there are videos back up again. They were completely down for a couple of days. As I said, they probably edited it out and got rid of the ones they didn't want to, and then re-uploaded everything they'd like to do. Um, so I think the reason they decided not to fire Mark Agnesi was because of basically what we said. It wasn't his fault that, um, that's what the writers wrote. Maybe that writer got fired. I honestly don't know. And never, uh, was able to find any information on that, whether that the person that wrote the, all of the text for that, uh, video, if they were fired or not, um, but they are not going to fire Mark Agnesi because they realize that he is a human being and he technically didn't make the mistakes. Gibson made the mistakes or the writer who wrote that particular video did. Um, he said there's a lot of exciting news, um, a lot of different new guitars coming out still. Um, I'm really hoping they bring back that high access heel joint from like the 2017, 2018 high performance series. Um, did they do that? They might have done that in 2016 too. Because I'll be honest with you, that was, I've been, I, I don't own one, but I played one. And that was probably my favorite heel joint of all time on any type of Gibson. Uh, was that hot? Was the high axis heel joint? I do not like the modern heel joint. Um, they they have done that in the past before. Um, I know Trogley brought that up at one point. <laughs> He loves his Gibsons, um, but other than that, um, we are expecting a lot more things out of actually Ebophone now, uh, but nothing that he can really talk about, per se. Um, we don't know what exactly style headstock they're going to plan on using. I'm not sure if it's going to be like an original Ebophone headstock, um, if it's going to be the Dove headstock, or if it's just going to be a Gibson headstock that they're changing Ebophone to. Uh, personally, I like that idea. Um, Fender uh, slash Squire has been doing the same thing for years, same headstock, different logo, uh, and I don't think I know a single person that hasn't owned a Squire Stratocaster or a Squire Telecaster, one of those two guitars in their entire lifetime, or some sort of iteration of that guitar. Um, but I, as I said, it would definitely be a good idea on Gibson's part because then somebody looks like, oh, hey, look, same headstock, same shape, same everything. Um, it's not really that different than the Gibson. I mean, yeah, the build quality is going to be different where it's built, China versus USA, etc. Um, I also would not be surprised if they brought back some Ebophone casinos and made them in the USA. Uh, there definitely is a market for them. People in the vintage market are constantly trying to find the old USA Ebophones, and it would be a great idea to produce a few Ebophone guitars in the USA again. Because, you know, might as well capitalize on that market. You're the one that owns the brand. Um, but I look forward to seeing what Eb more specifically Ebophone at this point than Gibson has to offer. Because there's really not too much in the new lineup that I was that excited about. I'll be honest. I, I did like the SGs um, with the Vibratos. That was kind of cool. But, I mean, they never, d like, fixed the problems that they had originally. Basically, they specced them and made them similarly to when they were new. And it was kind of all the same issues. Tuning stability, intonation, etc. Um, not the biggest plus. They could have definitely kind of did kind of did something like that, made it look like it, but then fixed the technology to make it where everything was beautiful and playable again. Nothing went out of tune. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Probably a lot of stuff going to happen at this coming winter's NAM, uh, especially from Ebophone. And as I said, I really hope we're getting like a Gibson headstock for Ebophone because I could use another one. I'll be honest. I could... Uh, I could use like another Ebophone, you know, maybe a signature model or something that has the uh, the Gibson style headstock. That'd be pretty cool. But we'll just have to wait and see, guys. Uh, so take away from this: Mark Agnesi is not fired. Um, Gibson's still trying to get back on the horse. We'll just have to wait and see. My name is Steve Gray. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.